Save every penny that you can. Evolve as a person. You should be able to do this every single year. You should be able to look back a year behind you and go, whoa, look how far I've come. True self-love is not YOLO. True self-love is discipline. So if you want to save 10, 20, or $50,000 or more, this is the plan for you. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Samuel Smiley and thank you so much for tuning in. Last time I told you that I wanted to talk about how I got my house, right? I bought a house. In order to do that, you need to obviously be able to save money. And at least for me that I know of, a lot of people I grew up with didn't have parents or friends or even grandparents who were talking to them about, you know, financial literacy. And it's really a serious issue, I think, that we should be wrestling a lot more because it, it affects everything in life. So today we're gonna to be talking about a plan to save anywhere from 10, 20, maybe even $50,000, depending on your income. But no matter what your income is, this video here will help you save money, know where your money's going, and it's gonna give you a foolproof plan uh, foolproof, proof. yes, I don't know what I just said there, but it's gonna give you a foolproof plan on how to do that. All of this is everything that I did, by the way. Step one, look at your past bank statements. Now, I know some of your stomachs just dropped. This is a scary thing. Take a breath, it's okay. You have to do this though. When you look back at your past monthly statements, you can count up the cost. You can find out where the money went and which is what you have to do. Before you can save, you have to first find out where's your money going. Find the problems. You're gonna find where you spend too much on food, subscriptions, going out with friends, going out with family, paying for your girlfriend, paying for your boyfriend, whatever, you're going to find it. So that's step number one. You have to do this. Find those bad habits, circle them. Find those bad choices, circle them. Write it all down, count it all up. And you know, this is a perfect time to tell you a little story. So let's get into it. When I look back on my statements, it was 2019 and it was December. I looked at my past statements, which was November. When I did this, I was in complete shock, horrified by what I found was my spending. I literally remember talk, talking to my girl and I was like, babe, who spent, who, who spent all this? There's no way I ate all this food. There's no way. I bought this much sushi and did we go out this much? Like I was just scratching my head. I was just like confused. I had spent over $850 just on food. It's like somebody's mortgage or something, you know? Like it's, it's really bonkers. I vowed to never do that again. And I haven't because I look back at the statements it made me that angry that I made a complete change. And now I am so much better off for it and on this direction and on this path. So I hope that helps, but just put it out there. You're not alone. Number two, get angry. Anytime someone makes a change for the positive, they have to get extremely angry. Do you ever watch those weight loss shows, right? You have a person who literally is like, you know, I'm tired of being picked on or whatever. I can't fit into this dress or I can't fit into these pants. And they usually have to get really angry and usually they're angry at one person, themselves. You have to look in the mirror because you have to take full responsibility for everything you've done. And let me tell you, I've done this. I got so angry, my account was always in the negative. I was getting all these charges from Wells Fargo, still with them, but man, I was like, it's the bank's fault. But it's like, no, like, the truth is that I'm the problem. What I do understand is that we all make choices. You get to make the same choices just as I do. Get angry. Look at that past statement. Get furious about your current circumstances. Because at the end of the day, if you're not angry, you won't change. You won't go to the gym. You won't eat the better food. And you won't save. Not gonna happen. It just won't. 70 to 80% of Americans don't have um, at least a thousand dollar emergency fund for just like a rainy day emergency. That's crazy. And if you're in those shoes, and I was in those shoes, you gotta get out of there immediately because the tire's gonna go flat, something's gonna happen with your engine, medical thing's gonna come up, you name it, it's gonna happen. Why? Because this is life, it's not perfect. So get angry. Next, after you get angry, number three, set your goals for six to eight months. This is your how much you wanna save goal. Do I wanna save 2,000, 
20,000, 40,000, 50,000 or more. Now, the reason you want to do it in six to eight months is because if you are going to do something in 12 months, then you're giving yourself a lot of time, right? And obviously that is the goal is to be at the end of the year, you have hit your goal or surpassed it. But if you shrink that goal, then you can put a little more fire under the engine to go, okay, here's what I need to do. Here's why I need to do it. And here's how fast I need to put these things in place, right? To make this happen. So you need to find out what it takes to build that budget. And it starts with what can you cut out, right? Hence, which takes us back to step one, finding out where you're spending your money. So because you found that out, now you can look at that sheet and go, okay, what can I cut out? What subscriptions? Do I need this Netflix account? Do I need this Prime, Disney Plus, HBO Max? Once you do that, you take those out. You then add that to the new money that you now have to save or pay off debt. And some people are saving up money because they either want to pay off debt or because they want to buy something. Maybe they want to buy a house. Maybe they want to start a business. Or maybe you want to give yourself a six month to 12 month emergency fund because you want to try a new venture. You want to be an entrepreneur. Whatever that may be, this is the type of method you want to be thinking of in order to do that. Cut these expenses out. They're not important. You don't need them. They're gone. Which then leads you to step four. Stop eating out. No matter how rich someone is, follow the money when it comes to food. I don't know what it is about food. Yes, I do. It tastes really good. Something about food for everyone is like, we don't mind. We go, oh, well, you know, I deserve it. I deserve, I deserve this coffee. I deserve this sushi, these tacos, whatever, whatever it is, we feel when it comes to food, so celebratory. And even watch out for those ice cream shops because those ice cream shops, listen, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, beautiful place called um, Jenny's Ice Cream. I love, you're not getting out of there we spend at least seven or more dollars on ice cream. Every once in a while, I go to Jenny's, usually when people are visiting and I don't have people visit often. So I don't go there often, right? So you wanna think about that. Where's your money going? How do I shrink my food budget? Let me tell you here. Meal prepping will go on Saturday and Sunday. We'll start at Costco and we'll buy bulk items. Listen, that is great. Buy bulk eggs, you can get 60 eggs. Then you get like a five pound, 10 pound bag of broccoli. I think we bought like 10 to 12 pounds of uh, chicken recently. And that was insane savings. And so then we meal prep and I'll put some uh, recipes in the description for you because these, these recipes are absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, if you get yourself down to a grocery list, learn how to cook. Moment of silence. Learn how to cook. Why do I say that? There's so many people who don't know how to cook and you're wondering why these fast food restaurants are billions of dollars in net worth. It's because you're giving them all of your money that you're supposed to be saving. Like really, it's ridiculous. So learn how to cook. And once you do that, now you're putting money back in your pocket. You're putting money back in your pocket and I love the sound of that. You're paying yourself. Number five, stop hanging out with friends. I know. You're lonely as it is. Pandemic, you name it. Here's the thing. Some of you, this won't be a problem for you. Some of you, it will. When you hang out with friends, you cannot deny that no matter how much you want to, eventually you're going to spend money, right? So what happens is you go out, you go, oh yeah, I'm just gonna hang, BYOB, whatever the case may be. Then all of a sudden, you buy a drink, getting some food, stopping by the gas station, need to get some gas, you're spending extra money, wondering where it's going. Hence, step one, checking that statement because you're gonna find a lot about your lifestyle. You can still have friends. They need to come over or you need to go over to their house or you guys need to meet at a park, go on a hike, get creative, find other ways to hang out that don't consist of spending money. If every single event that you have with your friends costs you money, then you may need to literally pause hanging out with your friends text each other, hit each other up on social media, support each other, whatever. That'll be the way you guys share love during this season. And I did this and we just locked everything down, but that's how I was able to save up so much money. I saved 20, over $20,000 in less than eight months. And that's all because of these hard sacrifices. So cutting out your friends or getting the right friends and sometimes cutting out your friends or pausing them for a moment will show you that you may not have the right friends to uh, go in this direction that I'm referring to right now. Because when you pause, sometimes it allows you to get enough distance to where you can realize 
wow, do I have the right friends that I want to take into this next phase of my life? So anyway, before I digress any further, number six, get a side gig or another job. This could be uh, Uber Eats. This can be, you know, anything from graphic design to maybe you take up uh, photography and start taking pictures of people. So there's other things that you can do and that you can make your own schedule, right? So you can do it either after your main job or on the side on the weekend. And I used to do Friday nights and Saturdays um, with Uber and Lyft, which was fantastic for me. It was a godsend. That now brings us to number seven, change your job. I always suggest people to stay at their company two to four years. That's it. Two to four years, get out of there. Update that resume, build up your skill level, maybe get a cert in something, get some new experience, leave on good terms, but you have to move. You have to move because when you move from one job to another, they're almost always going to pay you more. Why? Because you have that power where you have leverage, but anytime you leave a job, this other company is like, okay, in order to get you, you're not gonna take what you're making right now. Sure ain't, not gonna happen. You scale, you use the, that experience, and you go, okay, how can I move up? How can I make more? You make more by moving. A company is only gonna give you two to 3.5 to maybe 4%. Some will do 5%, but you're not gonna get that consistently every year. And even then, it's not that big of a jump. So you have to move companies, which leads us to number eight. And this is the last one for today. Make a budget sheet and tell your money where to go. I use the 50, 25, 25 rule. And what that means is I take 50% of my biweekly paycheck, 50% goes to my needs, 25% goes to my wants, another 25% goes to my savings slash debt. Now, if you have debt, all of that money should just be going straight towards debt because you're not saving it because it doesn't belong to you. Or some people do, they feel more comfortable, they'll save a bunch of it and then they'll pay down their debt. That's to your discretion. And I'm not telling you, by the way, also, I am not a financial advisor, I, I must say that, but this is just my opinion. And I would say, I know works because I've done it. And here's what I did. I would do this every two weeks. As my check is about to arrive, I break down, here's what my check looks like. 50% needs, 25% wants, 25% savings. I break that down. Then what it does is it shows me where my money should go. It tells me where my money should go. I know that at the end of the month, I have this much money saved. I have this much money to spend at the movies. I have this much money to uh, my cheat meal for the week. I have this much money for date night. Whatever it is, I know how much I have for the month. Let me tell you, the peace of mind that you are going to have is going to be next level. Do you hear me? Come in, come in, come in. All right, not that close. But seriously, you're going to be so happy that you're going to thank yourself. In six to eight months, you're going to hug yourself. Or as I did, and I'll tell you truthfully, I sat in the shower. Not sat, but you know, stood in the shower. And I was just, I hugged myself and I said, Samuel, thank you. Thank you. In this type of journey, just like losing weight or seeking, you know, mental guidance with a psychiatrist or a psychologist or whatever, and getting the help you need, which all these things should be done. And we'll get into that at another time as well. But when you evolve as a person, you should be able to do this every single year. You should be able to look back a year behind you and go, whoa, look how far I've come. Financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, across the board. And if you can't do that, start with this. Start with your money, start with your wallet. Cause I promise you, it will bleed into everything else. You're getting into doing your groceries. All of a sudden you're going to the gym. All of a sudden you're building better habits there. All of a sudden you're talking with your friends and talking with your family in a healthier way. Talking to yourself in a healthier way. Cause it starts there, right? So what better way of self-love as we all say it, but true self-love is not YOLO. True self-love is discipline. So if you want to save 10, 20 or $50,000 or more, this is the plan for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please do hit the like button and maybe subscribe, no pressure. But either way, I thank you for joining guys. I hope that this was helpful. And if I missed anything, or if you wanna just give someone else any other tips down below, please do so. It's gonna be a great year. We'll cover this more in greater detail. There is a lot of nuanced things and a lot of gray areas that I didn't hit today, but we'll hit them in another time. Other than that, love you guys. Peace.